Norman Lear, born in New Haven, Connecticut in 1922, was brought up in a Jewish household by his mother and father. When Lear was a boy of only nine years, his father was put away for fraud, leaving him to rely on his uncle Jack and grandfather Shia for role models and guidance. The men frequently discussed the political issues of the day with each other, which Lear picked up on and became connected to the world with. At this young age, Mr. Lear learned that a citizen can matter. It was these early influences that led Lear to begin thinking about his own path in life. I wanted to do what my Uncle Jack did. You know, I was a kid of the Depression, so I had, uh, I, I watched my father and his brothers and, and uh, my mother's brothers uh, go belly up in the Depression and saw that everywhere. But my Uncle Jack somehow was able to flip me a quarter every time he saw me. Every time he saw any of us, nephews or nieces, he had a quarter for us. So I wanted to be an uncle who could flip a quarter to a, to a nephew. Though Norman Lear had a general idea of where he wanted to be and what he wanted to do, there were personal struggles to be dealt with, including conflict between parents and eventually growing up without a father. These would later have an impact on several of Lear's shows. And that's the way my youth was. But uh, uh, our childhood has an immense impact on all of our lives. Uh, something must have gone well in my childhood. Did your mother and Despite father? Despite everything I can, I can remember to tell you. Did your parents have a loving relationship? My parents were e Archie and Edith. My, my father used to look, stand over my mother, look, have his nose next to hers, and say, Jeanette, stifle, stifle. His veins would stick out of his neck. And sometimes he would take her by the hair and scream, stifle. That's as much violence as I ever saw. But they lived at the ends of their nerves and the tops of their lungs all the time. My father was one of these fellows who was going to have a million dollars in 10 days to two weeks, always. He was an entrepreneur? So he was a salesman slash entrepreneur. His favorite way of describing himself was to say he could sell shit on a stick for lollipops. Uh, and he, I think he must have tried to do that too because he got into trouble. He had a, my dad, I've often spoken of him as having a, a screw in his head, which if turned a sixteenth of an inch one way or another, might have helped him get right from wrong all the time. But sometimes he missed and sometimes he had to pay for that. That we could use a man like Frank Ozover again. Before I come along. <laughs> so I suppose that the Puerto Ricans are number three then, hmm? Well, no, not necessarily there, little girl. Your Puerto Ricans could be four. <laughs> your jobs and your chins could be three. Oh, well, come on, Irene, after all, it's a well-known fact. Uh, men are weight more than women. <laughs> Archie, have you been reading Playboy? <laughs> no, Irene, the Bible. <laughs> he knows everything we do. Get out of here. You don't really believe that. Yes, I do. And how come you people are always running to confession telling him what's happening? Well, all the family caused a stir by his demonstration of the bigoted side of America, so another of Lear's creations made history with its iconically liberal character, the titular lead of the show. Lady Godiva was a freedom rider. She didn't care if the whole world could. Jones. His views were drastically different than Lear's other show. Florida, where are you going? To get the grocery. So why don't you use the back door? Walter! But you'll have a shorter walk. It's closer to the car. I know it's shorter, but you tell that to the NAACP over there. <laughs> it's none of my business. But how come most of your letters have MS in front of your name? That's the result of women's lib. You know, all men are called Mr., so we can't tell if they're married or single. But with women, we're either Miss or Mrs., so you know if they're married or single or not. Anyway, to make things equal, we have this new designation in front of our names. M.S., pronounced Ms. But honey, that ain't new. We've been saying that for years. It's legal now. You know, she's right. It's legal in New York State. You better give that a thought. I have given it a thought. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, 
Mother, I'm so sorry. I'll save it, Carol. She'll need it more later. Say in about six months when she looks like a water buffalo in one of those little flowered tents. <laughs> but why were these shows so revolutionary? Why did they change the way Americans view television? The answer was simple. Americans have viewed television as a way of entertainment and never a medium for expressing ideas, news, and new issues into the world. Norman Lear changed that. Shows previously had been for pure entertainment and not for any real means of communication of ideas or opinions. This theme spread across shows from several decades, from I Love Lucy of the 50s to Beverly Hillbillies in the 60s, as the following clips show. When you were young, you had your own set of values. Values that nothing could change. An ice cream cone was a snow-capped mountain of sheer delight. An autographed baseball was more precious than rubies. And a note from the teacher meant only one thing, disaster. And that's our story tonight on Leave it to Beaver. This is Beverly Hills. And here come the Beverly Hillbilly. My name's Beaver. Beaver? Is that your given name? Yes, ma'am. My brother given it to me. <laughs> well, in the classroom, I'd better call you Theodore. Yes, Miss Canfield. Theodore, I have a note here to your mother and father. Is the foreigner staying to supper? I'm ashamed to say I ain't asked him. How about it? Oh, I, I don't think so. Oh, no trouble. What you cooking tonight, Granny? Mustard greens and possum innards. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Did you hear that, Mr. Brewster? Very clearly. <laughs> Want to change your mind? Uh, not this time. Well, if you could happen to come back tomorrow, we'll be having leftovers. That's the thing about possum innards. He's just as good as second day. I'm putting on... shows weren't just so because they differed so greatly from shows of the past. Topics of the show this time with current events led to powerful social statements. A historic example of this was the Maud's Dilemma episode of Maud, when Maud decides to have an abortion. This was in direct correlation with the court hearing of Roe vs. Wade, which legalized abortion. Good evening. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. The majority in cases from Texas and Georgia said that the decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor, not the government. Thus, the anti-abortion laws of 46 states were rendered unconstitutional. More on the third. It ruled that states may make no laws restricting a doctor's right to decide his patient needs an abortion and to carry out that abortion during the first three months of a pregnancy. After that comparatively safe three-month period, abortions may be regulated, but not prohibited by state law and for the benefit of the mother's health alone. Which set a much different tone for the episode. <laughs> You're just scared. I am not scared. You are, and it's as simple as going to the dentist. Now I'm scared. <laughs> Mother, listen to me. It's a simple operation oh. now. But when you were growing up, it was illegal. And it was dangerous, and it was sinister, and you've never gotten over that. Now you tell me that's not true. It's not true. And you're right. I've never gotten over it. But abortion rights were only part of one larger movement that was shook culture at the time, the New Wave Feminist Movement. I am woman, hear me more, in numbers too big to ignore. And I know too much to go back and pretend. Cause I've heard it all before, and I've been down there on the floor. And no one's ever gonna keep me down again. Oh, yes, I am wise, but it's wisdom for the pain. Yes, I pay the price, but look how much I gain. If I have to, I can do anything. I am strong, I am invincible. 
rights movement of the 60s, just as the abolitionists had, inspired numerous groups to sort of take up the cause of their own liberty. And um, the feminist, the so-called the second wave of feminist, is, feminism is sort of the largest example of this. Uh, a new women's movement arises. It, the women's movement had been pretty moribund after the achievement of the vote. Now a new women's movement arises, but its issue is no longer political rights, which have been gained, but personal rights.